Welcome, I'm Brian Hayes, and this is Automation of the Week. Every Tuesday, we'll create another video for you showing you step-by-step -step how to build out an automation to improve your business or your processes. This week, I'm gonna show you how to use a screen flow to create a button that can create multiple records within Salesforce. At the end of the video, I'll show you an advanced tip that's easy to miss that can be used across all of your different screen flows. So to start off with, let's talk about the use case. Now it's pretty easy in Salesforce to create a button that creates a new record, but there's plenty of situations where you have an advanced data model or you have a process that's really gonna require you to create multiple records within the system. And for you to have to hit multiple buttons or to do this manually is just a waste of time, especially because with Flow, we can automate it. So for our use case today, let's say that we've got a little bit more advanced onboarding process and we wanna use the case object to manage that. Perhaps our primary case is for the onboarding process overall, and then we have a child case to set up that person in billing. Now you can take these principles that we're gonna go through though and apply them to really any object or any records within the system. The important takeaway here is how can you use a screen flow to create a button that then is gonna create multiple records that you could relate to each other. So step one, let's go into the setup area and create a new screen flow. Hit the gear in the upper right hand corner, click on setup and then bring up the flows menu in the setup area. Click new flow and then select screen flow. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is open up this resources area on the left hand side and create a new resource. And we're gonna create a variable to store the record ID of the contact that we're on. Cause that's where we're gonna have the button. We'll have the button that's placed on the contact record when you click that button, it'll save the record ID into this variable. And then we'll use this variable throughout the rest of our flow. So call your variable record ID, the data type will be text and make sure it's available for input. That's how we're gonna pass the ID of the record into the flow. The next thing we wanna do is get all the other details related to this contact. We might wanna use them in our flow. So choose get records here and we're gonna get a contact. I'll call this get contact. The object we want is the contact object and we want the contact whose ID is equal to that record ID variable that we had you know, passed into the flow. We only need the first record. There should only be one contact with this unique ID and we're gonna store all the fields so we just have them if we need them. Now that we've got the contact, we can create our cases. Hit the plus sign and go and select create. So we'll create a record and the first record we're gonna create is our overview case. Let's call it onboarding case. We'll create one record here and we don't have a record variable for this, so instead we're just gonna use separate resources and literal values. For the object, select case, and now we can add all of the different field values for the case that we're most concerned with. So the first thing we can start with is the subject. Now for the value here, we could just write onboarding. We could also use a text template that has the account name and then dash onboarding, which is really what I would recommend. But let's look at some of these other fields we might wanna fill out. I think we're gonna to wanna to relate this case to an account. So go ahead and choose account ID. Let's also relate this to the contact. So select contact ID. Next, go ahead and select priority. So if this is onboarding, let's make that a high priority case. And then we could add any of these other fields that we're interested in as well. Setting the stage or the description with extra information about what they should be doing in this case, you know, etc. Typically, the more guidelines you can give, the better, make it easier on your users. So for the account ID, select the value here. If you scroll down, we've got our record, our contact from our get contact step. If you select that, you can see that it actually connects through to the related account as well. So I could select this account here and then select the ID, but we actually already have it right, right beneath here. Let's go ahead and select account ID to insert that. And then for contact ID, it's very similar. So scroll down to our contact from get contact and if you scroll down here, we should see the ID field for that specific contact record. And this last option here, we'll just delete that. That should do it, so click done, and that's gonna create that case. Now the next thing we can do is add another create record step, and this can be a sub case from the original one. So maybe this will be, you know, add to billing system, we'll say. So let's choose our create records here and we'll call this create billing case. You know, maybe that's not quite descriptive enough. So let's say create new customer billing case. In the description, we can say this is used to add the new customer to our billing system. 
And really it's used to track adding the new customer to our billing system. And this is gonna be very similar. Again, we'll use separate resources and literal values. And the object we want is case. And what we can also do now is certainly, you know, relate it to the account ID and the contact, but we can also add in a parent case. So if we look for the parent case field, you can select that. And then in the value, you can see that we actually have a new variable that was created automatically for us. It's right here. It's a text variable. It says case ID from create onboarding case. Go ahead and select that. And this is now going to set that case we just created in the last step as the parent of this new case that we're creating. So go ahead and fill out your contact ID. Same as before, go to contact from get contact, select ID, go to the contact from get contact again and select our account ID. And let's go ahead and add in a subject as well. Add to billing system and click done. Now you'll notice we have these two different create record steps here. Most of the time you wanna limit the number of database actions that you have in a flow because they're expensive. They use a lot of resources and they slow things down. So you typically wanna combine these two different create steps, You know, add those two cases together in a collection and then add them to the database all at once. But in this example, we really need them separate. We can't do that because the second case is referring to the ID of the first case. So you have to have the first case created. It's gotta exist in the database before we're able to reference that ID and set it as the parent. Okay, go ahead and click save and let's run this through the debug to see if it works. I'm gonna call this contact because that's where we're gonna start the flow from, create onboarding cases. Now, when you click debug, you can actually just pass in the ID of the contact record directly into the debug screen. It's asking for it right here. So I'm gonna come over here to Alexis Rose Communications and let's copy the ID for Alexis Rose and paste into that variable, then click run. Okay, on the right hand side, you can see all the steps that it went through. Don't see any errors, so that's a good sign. And it looks like it created those records just fine. Our next step now is to activate this flow and then create a button for it on the contact object. Once you click activate, come back to the object manager and pull up the contact object. Choose button links and actions and then create a new action. And from here, we can choose the action type of flow and then we can select our, our active screen flow. Only screen flows are gonna be available if you're trying to launch them from a button. So there it is, contact dash create onboarding case. Let's just call this start onboarding. Go ahead and click save. Last thing we need to do is add this to our page layout. So come back to that contact object, go into your page layouts, select whichever layout you currently have active. And then in the toolbox up here, select mobile and lightning actions. And you should see that there's a new action available here. In our case, it's right there, start onboarding. Click that, drag it down onto the layout and hit save. Now when we're back at our contact, if you hit refresh, you can see there's our button right there, start onboarding. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. The screen flow is now running, and then it's just showing us that the flow has finished because we didn't actually create any screens in this flow. It is a screen flow, but it's really just a screen flow in order for us to be able to trigger it from a button. And now if you look under related, we've got some new cases here. So here's our onboarding case and our add to billing system case. And then there's a, a couple more from when we debugged it a little bit earlier. So if we click on this add to billing system case, you can see under our parent case field, we actually have a value there. Click on that and you can see that that is our onboarding case. If you look under related, you can also see what cases are related to onboarding. Pretty easy. So we have clicked one button and we've created two records that are related to each other as a result. Now let's improve this flow a little bit and I'll show you how you can actually use that screen to customize the details before the case is created. So come back to the flow. And the next thing we want to do is actually create a screen. So after our get step, go ahead and add a screen and we'll call this screen, choose case owner. So at this point, screens are great because we can now take additional user input to then impact what the automation is going to do. So what we can do with this screen is add a pick list that allows the user to choose who should own these cases. Maybe you have multiple people within the company and you need to assign this onboarding case to somebody on your team. So to do that, go ahead and select the pick list option on the left. And for the label, we'll say, please choose a case owner. 
And then at the bottom here, we can actually create our choices. So this is the advanced tip here. Instead of just writing in the name of a person and then manually putting in their ID later, we can create a choice resource called a record choice set. And a record choice set is essentially a get, which then presents the results of that get to the user in a pick list. So let me show you. So for this record choice set, we'll call this active users. And then we can choose from any objects within Salesforce, in this case, users. And we want all of the users where is active is equal to true. But you could set up these filters however you want. And again, it could be against you know any object in the system. I'm not worried about how they're sorted. And then for the choice label, I think I would like their full name to be the label. And then for the choice value, we'll choose the ID of that user. But you could also you know, have the email be the choice value. In different cases, we could change the choice label. If you didn't want their name, you'd rather have their username or something like that. For now, this is great. And we don't need any additional user field values, so we'll just skip that part. Then hit done and hit done. And for this onboarding case, let's add a new field here for owner. And the owner ID is gonna be the result of that selection. So whatever person was chosen in that screen will become the owner of our case. If you scroll down, you can see there's a screen components resource here. That's what we just created. Please choose a case owner. Select that. And whatever sl that selection was is gonna be inserted into this step. Hit done. And for the new customer billing case, we'll just leave that the same. So if you don't select an owner, then whoever clicked that button is gonna be the default owner. But for our onboarding case, we'll have that determined by that selection in the screen. Hit save as. I'm going to hit activate, and then let's take a look at this in our environment. So come back here to the contact record and click that start onboarding link again. Now we have a screen, and this screen has that record choice set, which is getting all of our different active users. So here you can see we have a lot to choose from. Of course, some of these are integration users, which we wouldn't really want to have owning a case. So we might want to go back there and add an additional filter. But I could choose, you know, David Rose or Road of Support, potentially. So in this case, I'll choose Road of Support. Hit Next. And now that new case that was just created is going to be owned by Road of Support instead of being owned by me, David Rose, in this case. Let's take a look at that onboarding case. And you can see right there, under Case Owner, it's owned by Road of Support. But if we look at that subcase, Add to Billing System, that should still be owned by the user I'm logged in as, in this case, David Rose. So the next time you have a process that requires user input and you need to create multiple records, you should consider doing that with a screen flow. I think you'll find it'll end up speeding things up for your users and save a lot of time. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to learn more about Salesforce and Pardot, take a look at our courses at academy.rotov.io. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and click subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.